Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to show you how to install the Smart Filament Sensor from Big Tree Tech. I'm going to walk through the physical install part of it first, and then we'll jump over to the computer, go through the firmware side. If you've updated your firmware before, the overall process isn't difficult, and it gives you the missing feature of the filament runout sensor, uh, which can come in really handy if you're running a lot of prints or you like to run long prints overnight or things like that when you're not keeping an eye on the roll. I know there's been many times on my TAS 6 where um, I would measure the filament. I think I have enough for a print. Let it go overnight and, and in the morning when I go to check on it, it ran out of filament like 90% through the print. So the entire thing was a scrap. So having this filament runout sensor will help prevent that from happening. Basically what it does is it tracks the filament running through it and if there is no filament it's going to go ahead and pause it and if there's a break in the line it will also act the same way and go ahead and pause as well so you don't ruin that print. All right, so before we get started, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the physical install side. Uh, only tool you're gonna need is the Allen wrench in order to get to the main board. Now, in this example, I'm using an Ender 3 Pro and an SKR Mini V2. They say that the sensor will work on any board that has a uh, port for the stop. The standard 8-bit board, uh, which is this guy that came with my Ender 3, does not. So if you're still running a stock board and you're on the 8-bit one, uh, you're not going to be able to use this. If you've upgraded uh, to an SKR, uh, you will be able to. And if you're running the new 32-bit board that comes with the Ender 3 V2s and some of the newer ones that have shipped uh, non-V2 as well, uh, those might have it. I haven't actually been able to see it, so I can't confirm that either way. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and open the box and take a look to see what we got. Um, here we got the actual sensor itself, uh, some extra bolts, and a piece of tubing that will go here where this installs, and then our cables. I wanted to talk more about the smart sensor part a bit more. Um, this sensor is capable of doing a lot more than just your filament break uh, detection. Uh, that just has like a little metal switch that if the filament isn't pushing down on, it stops it. Uh, but it doesn't really account for any type of resistance or anything like that. Uh, the smart sense is able to uh, stop it if there's uh, chunks missing, so if you um, damage the filament at all, or if the filament is clogged, or, like the roll isn't spinning or anything like that. Um, this device is able to account for all of that. So it's a pretty large step above the standard uh, filament runout sensor. Um, with that being said, you do have to choose how you want to use it. The way it works is it sends a pulse uh, to whatever device you're using. So it's either going to be to your main board, in this case the SKR Mini, or to the touch screen if you're using a TFT-35. Uh, so with that, you have to decide which mode you want to use. Uh, if you're going to be using the simulator mode on the screen or you don't have the touch screen side, you'll want to connect it to your main board. If you're going to be using the touch screen or the newer controls that come with the touch screen, then you're going to want to connect it to your um, TFT-35. So with that being said, I'm going to break this video into two sections. The one that I'm covering today is going to be how to install it on your main board, so the SKR Mini in this example. Next week's video is going to be covering how to connect it to your uh, TFT-35 or your touchscreen display. Now these videos are not specific to the Ender 3, but it is what I'm using. Alright guys, I went ahead and zoomed in on the printer. Uh, what we're going to have to do is take the cover off to expose the main board. If you have an Ender 3, you're going to have the screws on the top. If you have a 3 Pro, you're going to have one screw on the top and three on the bottom here. So it's going to take those off. All right, now that we've got the cover off, we can go ahead and connect our cable. Um, you should see a port here that says EO stop. Uh, that's where we're gonna connect this in at. I don't know if you can tell on the camera here, but you've got the clips at two different points. So you can only plug it in one way on the uh, board, and then the other side will plug into the device itself. So let's go ahead and just plug it in on the device. Uh, here you can have the gaps in the middle there, so we'll go with the same one that matches, slide that in place, and then we'll go ahead and plug this into the board. Uh, 
All right, now that that's plugged in, we'll go ahead and just run this cable out and go ahead and close it back up really quick. All right guys, I wanted to cover the physical install really quick. Uh, there's not much to this part once you got it cabled. Uh, all you gotta do is, so, sorry I already had this partly apart, but uh, it's kind of a pain to take off, so I don't wanna mess with that. Uh, but what you end up doing is you will disconnect the tube from here by pushing this in and pulling out on the tube. And you will go ahead and connect the tube into either side of the sensor and then the blue tube that came with it, you'll go ahead and plug it into uh, this and then you'll just run it right here. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You're gonna want to go ahead and zip tie this cable uh, along with the rest of the cables if that's where you're gonna keep it. So there are other options for mounting. Um, Thingiverse has a couple examples out there. I'm gonna explore those a little bit closer before I actually mount this, but I am gonna use it how it is for now because it will work just fine. But I would recommend that if you don't want this hanging here that you check out some of the mounting options. All right guys, so we're here at the computer. Um, I went ahead and loaded the firmware that I'm working with into VS Code. If you haven't worked with VS Code or you haven't actually gone through the custom firmware upgrade process, I would suggest you go through that first. I'll link to that in the description below. I did a video covering that entire process start to finish. Uh, I think it makes more sense to link to that in this video than to have this be a 45 minute video here. All right, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and make the changes required, and then we will go ahead and just build this, save it to our SD card, then go over to the printer and go ahead and update the firmware. All right, so first let's go ahead and um, run through all of the changes required. I'm just gonna do them one at a time here. All right, so first thing we wanna find is filament runout sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for that. All right, so here we go. We want to uncomment this, uh, basically saying that we are using a filament runout sensor. All right, next we're gonna to want to set the filament runout distance. All right, so we'll go ahead and uncomment this. And the instructions for this say to set it to seven millimeters, so we'll just and just from 25 to 7. All right, so now we want to go ahead and uncomment filament motion sensor, and, and uh, we want to search for nozzle park. This is basically going to tell the nozzle where to go when it's paused. So go ahead and search for that. All right, so we have that right here. We just want to uncomment that. And this is where it's going to end up parking. If you want to change that, you can but the default settings should be good there. All right, then the last thing we need to do is go over to the configuration underscore advanced dot H and go ahead and search for pause. Uh, we need to enable the advanced pause feature, which is going to be right here. We just need to uncomment that. Now you can tweak these settings here if you want. Um, I found that most of the time the default settings work fine. Uh, actually, Marlin's built-in pause feature works quite well. Uh, so I'm just going to leave those as is. All right, guys, now that we got all our changes made, let's go ahead and compile it, and then we can copy over to the SD card. All right, so let's go ahead and go down here and hit uh, Platform I.O. Build. That'll go ahead and give us the build or compile the firmware. And then from there, we'll go to the directory of where you have the firmware. Um, there'll be a platform IO folder, which I'll go ahead and pull up really quick here. So this would be the root directory. Uh, you go to .pio or platform IO, go to build, and go ahead and go to your board here. And then you'll grab this firmware.bin and go ahead and copy it to a clean SD card. From there, you'll just go ahead and enter the printer and power it on, and it will go ahead and load that firmware for you. Again, I cover this process in a lot more detail in the video I did on this subject. So if you have any questions, uh, you can leave a comment below or reference that video. All right, guys, we got the filament runout sensor connected to the SKR Mini. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut 
the filament to show you what's going to happen as it feeds it through. And while we're waiting for that, um, I did want to make a note that if you run into issues where it's constantly locking or engaging uh, the trip sensor, um, go ahead and clear your EEPROM. Uh, I had the same issue, I was fighting it for a little bit, but it seems like every time I'm doing a upgrade like this that ends up biting me, I keep forgetting to go back and erase that. So I went ahead and erased that and it fixed the issue I was having where it was just constantly engaging. I also wanted to make a note that right now I have the sensor kind of just laying back there in line. Um, when I actually mount this permanently, I'm going to get an adapter off of Thingiverse and just print it. Um, there are a couple options. I'll link to those in the description below. Alright, there you go. You can see that it went ahead and paused it and went back to the park location. So now all we have to do is swap out the filament. It's going to do an unload here. As you can see the filament coming off over to the side in here in a second. So we just go ahead and do a filament swap. So if we did that, kind of just fed this back through. And then we'll feed the new one in and then I'll show you what it looks like. the new filament line is back in we'll go ahead and engage it's going to do a purge now so if you're switching filament colors or anything you'd want to make sure you purge enough to get the new color in there uh, if you're keeping the same color you just want to make sure that it's coming out cleanly which it is and then at this point I'll kind of clean the filament off be careful not to touch the tip there because it is going to be hot and then just go ahead and hit continue and it will get back to printing all right if you have any questions about the process uh, go ahead and leave a comment below i'll get back to you as soon as i can thanks all right guys so that's the process to connect your smart filament sensor to the main board like i said next week i'll go over the process to connect it to your tft35 if that's what you're using uh, you will have to go through the firmware update. It'll be a little bit more than what we just did, plus one, and then you'll have to update the firmware on the uh, TFT35 as well to account for the changes. It's just a couple changes, so it's not much, but it's a couple more steps that you will have to do. Uh, if you guys have any questions or like me to cover anything else, um, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you.